Okay, today we have an old fashioned, uh, what's this, a 9.30 or 7.30? Anyway, it's an old Lockwood. Lockwood lever handle. So let's quickly go through and change the change combination. So to start off with, we've got this copper like circlip here, so that needs to be bent out of the way a little bit. Let's bend it off like that. And we'll just put those two parts aside. And we lift this one up here. And there's the spring there. We also do sell some of these parts on our website, the spring especially. We'll pull that one out there. And we'll just lift off that outer rows there. It's got all sorts of dust in there. Very tight, a lot of grease sort of holding it on there. And there's our cylinder. So now we've got the cylinder out. We've got this little part here. Take note of the way that goes. So we'll take that off. We'll take the circlip off the back of the cylinder now. Yeah, that's off. Now we need to open it up. So I might go for the shimming method on this one. I have a good little piece of shim right here. Okay, so I'm going to put that at the back there. Normally I do this in a vise, uh, it's a bit quicker. But the problem if I do it in a vise, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'll do it this way. So shimming is using a very fine piece of shim metal to go in between the bottom pin and the driver pin to create the shear line so that we can open and recode the lock. Okay, it looks like it's a five pinner. So be very careful with the shim shins are expensive and also you can quite easily get a false um, false position so you might need to pull it back just a fraction every now and again if you get in between the spring if you're not finding that bottom pin you're getting between the spring you can one to go one to go we're almost there and I'm stuck in a spring I can feel it literally one to go would have been quicker if I'd used a vise. Okay, cylinder is turned. We are good to go. I'm going to leave that piece of shim in there and just follow it through with uh, with my follower, making sure none of the pins can fall out. No, they will. Okay, got it. And then, as suspected, only five uh, five pins there. So now I'm just going to grab a set of change change keys here. Here's my change keys. Now these are Brava. They have a little code on the back, so sometimes we can just use that code. Take note, these are original pins, so they've got that slight little chamfer. So they're original locker pins. So even though this lock is 20 years old, it looks like it's never been changed in its life. So today is its big day. It's getting changed. Okay, so I've dropped in a two and it's low. So for every number on this key, I'm going to go one up. See how that looks. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. So I've got two five, so I'm going to go three, six. And then I've got a three. So I'm going to put in four, and then I've got a four, which I'm going to make a five. Oop, no. and uh, one more five. Okay, so our pins are slight touch high. I'm going to try that, but uh, we just dropped our bottom pins because I'm not using the correct follower here. There looks like little mushroom pins in there. That's unusual. It's unusual. So I've got to ride these top pins right along this line here, otherwise they're just going to fall and it's going to make a mess. So I can't move it and I'm getting stuck, getting stuck on that little ridge. Here's where that piece of shim comes in handy one more time. I'm going to push that piece of shim there. I'm going to use the little piece of shim to build a bridge. Just got to get this. Okay, 
So I've used that little piece of shim to build a bridge so I can slide over onto my plug. And did that work? No. We're still getting trapped. Okay, so basically there's a little lump on this plug here which is not great, but I can overcome that. And also um, I need to push down on the on the follower so that the pins don't get stuck. And I can see instantly that my pins are too high and I just lost three pins. Okay, so let's throw them back in there while we still got a chance. So I pull that back. We lost four pins actually. Now these are actually spool pins. I don't know why. Uh, I didn't think they came came out too much later in life, but looks like they did in this model. Okay, one spool pin back in. Two. Three. And this one, the actual pin, uh, the spring came out as well. I was pop a normal pin in there. Okay, so, although I've pinned it up to code and all the rest, my keys are fraction high, I don't want to go down, so the best idea is just to, uh, quickest way is just to hit it with a fold, take it down one cut, or just to, just enough. So I've just hit that with the impressioning file. That's how come some of them are a little bit wavy. And that's going to bring them down exactly. Sometimes you can get away with just being a little bit high, but on this particular lock, it won't let us get away with anything. Okay, now that looks a lot better. Let's try that again. Okay, so we're going to go there. Hopefully I'm going to get over this bump, but I'm going to use a piece of shim just to... Just to increase my chances of success. Okay, here we go. Alright, we're good. Okay, so those pins are still a little bit tight. Now, the next trick we're going to do is we're going to turn it a bit. Then it's not clicky at all, but it is a little bit tight, I can tell on those pins. So by having a look at my key now, I don't know if you can see it, but I can definitely see an impressioning mark on the second. Third's okay, fourth's okay, fifth fifth is okay so definitely the second needs needs to lose a little bit of meat okay second now has lost a little bit of meat all of our ramps are good and good at in and out okay and that's now got no no resistance whatsoever so that's good and all I need to do now is just duplicate the key that I've altered to the other key uh, which is only a slight fraction and then those keys so the benefit of using these keys was I didn't want to use um, more keys or cut them to code because each time I do that it costs more money. When I have these pre-cut keys I can get more profit by using keys that are already cut and it's also quicker so that's that's why I do it. Most locksmiths use pre-cut keys. It's better than wasting keys. They're brand new keys, they come from different locks. Okay, so let's put, put this back in there so I can see there's a cutout in here and in here which marries up. So in this particular lock, when the key is turned, it moves this section here which pulls the latch back so the handle stays solid all the time. So, pretty sure it does, but we'll double check that function. Making sure that this is pushed down all the way Straighten up that a little bit, that circlip. Get our little screwdriver in there. Okay, some big needle nose pliers now are going to be needed. Squish this down. Squish. 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 Make sure it's not coming off. Okay, so there we are. Handle is locked. We're going to use our key. I'm going to turn it. And as you can see, it's only rotating the drive, which the drive will be connected to the latch, so it'll only pull the latch back. So now I'll copy one key to the other, and we are done. So that's making a key for the uh, 930, which is the 530 lock cylinder, uh, lever handle, 
and this one is what they call storeroom function. So the handle is always locked, and when you use the key, it will latch back. Okay, that's it.